Okay, so we're in the process of trying to do uh, MCU Thanos versus X Men. So all the all the Fox movies, just X Men proper. And I've had some issues with that one because it's taken a lot of time to to go through the films. And I have noticed a lot of people have been asking for Superman from Justice League film versus Thor from Infinity War. So I was like, okay, yeah, that's this something I could I can work through. I've actually I've already done a, a work through of the, indip the individual teams, so it's actually okay for me to try to do something of this nature. Uh, for the ones who've been asking for Kratos from the God of War series, when it comes to my depth into the world of video games. I kind of really stopped with the Wii, so I don't know how many generations ago that is. Uh, I'm more of a fan of older video games, that'd be you know, Genesis, Super Nintendo, PS1, Dreamcast would be about where I really kind of stop at. But that's besides the point. So we've got Justice League Superman versus Infinity War Thor. As always, all the rules apply. Now with this one, it's going to be slightly more difficult because, not a spoiler, Superman appears towards the end of the Justice League film. And Thor in this iteration, this is actually a statue. It's an amazing looking statue because you got Thor in the full Ragnarok thing. Even though I do think the issue, of course, is that they have him with the eye patch while wielding Stormbreaker, which he doesn't wield in the movie. So because now we're looking at Infinity War, this is Thor towards the end of the film, towards the end of the film. Let's get right into this. <coughs> I will give the intelligence edge to, to, to Superman. And most of this is because the way they designed Thor, uh, he's a bragger, there's a lot of bravado. And after, then he becomes really bro Thor. He's not shown as being someone who's cunning. He's not shown as being someone who has you know, thousands of years of experience. He's shown as being like your bro. I will say I liked in Infinity War when he has that moment where he's with the Guardians and he kind of drops the bravado for a little bit. It's kind of like, oh, well, you know, just watch my brother die, all my friends are dead, and my homework got destroyed. God, the things are fantastic. And I was like, good. I, I, I'd much rather prefer the, I have this bravado, but it's entirely false, otherwise I'd be crying. It, it was a subtle dig to the way DC does all the characters. All the characters are always, you know, they're sad, which is fine. But the fact that you know, they actually show him being like, oh, well, you know, I'm this way, I'm laughing, laughing and more on the, on the giddy side because if I wasn't, I would be sulking and undeniably brooding. But I still think the way that Superman has been portrayed, he definitely comes up as a much more intellectually inclined individual than, than Bro Thor. Of course, having done that, and now my, there we go. Find ability, no, no doubt in my mind that Thor is significantly better finder. This is when he does actually pull upon all the years of experience that he actually has from being the god of thunder. Strength. Hear me out on this one. Just relax. I, I was comparing the two main feats of strength. One looking at Superman flying and carrying a building full of people. So you've got uh, minimal leverage and he has to equally support a massive structure. Versus Thor holding up at the iris. Now with Thor it's a static hold. So he's in one position using his body, you know, using his whole body to open up and keep an iris open. Where Superman's in the process of moving while carrying a heavy load. And I also thought, well, at the same time, too, when we saw Superman strike and just pretty easily physically dominate Steppenwolf, who to this time had defeated every other man of the Justice League easily, and he was able to bludgeon him successfully, very easily, that his strength is easily above that of Thor, the way Thor is portrayed, and what we've actually seen. Speed, no, no real issue here, it comes to the, the speed we've got. When they show in the initial battle where the Justice League is facing Superman, and he's a shade slower than Flash. And Flash is shown as just speedy, speed blessing everything in sight. Where well, we don't see that with Thor. Yes, people say Thor went from where he had the Stormbreaker forged to, but that's more of a teleportation thing. 
not really a ability that we've seen him you know, perfectly pull out. Vulnerability. I had to think hard about this one. I was like, well, did Superman really get hit at all? Because I think Superman took took a punch from Steppenwolf, did a strike himself, and just kind of lasted off like it was nothing. And I was like, okay, well, is that bigger than pretty much being baked by the sun? Ironically, if you reverse the positions in the films, you said would have had Thor taking on Steppenwolf, which a new god versus a Norse god would have been a pretty awesome fight. And Superman being like, okay, so what I do? You'd be taking the full brunt of this sun. Oh, sweet. Are you are you okay? Totally. This is, I get my power from the sun. All day, every day. They're actually getting up a little bit, a little bit farther now. Yeah, I'm absorbing the solar radiation, blasting from this. Maybe too much to actually, you know, fire the, the forge behind me, but you know what? I got this. Like, it's nothing. Now, of course, from a durability standpoint, this one I kind of have to extract information from, specifically because Superman has been dead. He is a solar battery. He requires a, de a decent amount of solar energy to fully you know, build up his reserves. Now we do know that he was beaten pretty handily when it came to the battle against Doomsday. So he had both the, uh, the kryptonite wearing him down, it was a battle that was at night. So most of his reserves have been entirely just depleted. Where we do see that Thor is hurt, he's damaged from absorbing the, all the, the solar radiation, but the moment he touches Stormbreaker, perch right back up. So it now means then that Beyond the fact that he has Thor and he's the god of thunder, he now has Stormbreaker kind of giving him that extra edge, that extra oomph, that extra amount of just raw power coursing through him. So he goes from being very badly hurt, from being in a static hold absorbing the, you know, the blast of the sun, to being ready to go and teleports down to this massive battle. Okay. You know, that means then that he probably has more in the tank than Superman does. Energy. <sighs> I'm going to give this one to, to Thor. Because what we see from Stormbreaker, like I mentioned in earlier videos, it's straight up Dynasty Warriors. It's giant sweeping motions with these huge bursts of electricity. It's giant bolts of lightning. I mean, he's coursing through and decimating the, the army that, that Thanos has brought for that final battle in Wakanda. And he's doing it with ease. And versatility. I give it to Superman because we do know he has the frost breath, he has the heat vision, he has the microscopic vision, he has the super hearing. I mean, he's got a full acclimate of all the skills. We don't get to see if Stormbreaker does the weather manipulation if he's able to use it to make himself fly significantly faster. We do see him move faster, but we don't see him get the ability to you know, do the toilet with Milner and fly forward because it's not the way the Stormbreaker is not designed for that sort of motion. And we only see him use it for effectively the, the finale of the film. So we don't get to see if it has all of the abilities. And at the same time, too, some of the things we saw Thor do in Ragnarok, where he didn't need the hammers as a conduit for his power, we don't see him utilize that in Infinity War. We see him still kind of, I think it's after he gets uh, emasculated by Thanos, he kind of needs the hammer to be like, hey, oh, okay, you know, I really am the like, God of Thunder. He kind of needs that as like, a psychological crutch, effectively, to really, really use his full power. Because when we saw him defeat uh, Hela in Ragnarok, he didn't have a hammer. He just channeled all through himself and was able to, to defeat his sister. X-Factor. I'm, I'm going to give this one to Thor. I know people have said about this about in the past that we don't know about Superman's weakness to, to magic. Because he was able to withstand the... He was able to kind of withstand the, 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 the golden lasso of truth. However, there has been a caveat in the past 
that dependent upon the will of the person wrapped up, that they can kind of push against and defy the, the golden lasso. We did see in Wonder Woman where Steve Trevor actually tried to resist it but couldn't. We tried really hard, and they're like, "This too much is going to kill you." I think that Superman probably is at the stage he was at the time they had the lasso on him. He was probably much more like a feral state, so he might have just had his raw will, and it might not have been enough for Wonder Woman to actually fully con to contain him. Same thing with Doomsday. You, know, you really can't... It'd be like uh, attaching a, a bear to a lie detector test. Sure, you might find out something, but it's a bear. This is not going to work this anyway. It's a, it's a, it's a wild beast that's going to have a much different uh, mentality, different uh, intellectual basis that might not be able to work in quite the same way the lasso of truth would work on, on most fully sentient beings. But seeing how Thor was able to bury his axe in the Thanos' chest pretty easily, looking at all the abilities that Thor has got with this. You know, Superman, he's going to dodge the lightning. He's going to dodge the lightning. But if he's going to get in close, the big burst that we saw Thor be able to do it's going to take a couple of those, and Superman, he's just, he's not at his peak level. He's at a strong level, he's not at his peak level. Where Thor, fresh as a daisy, full of energy, I think that he definitely has the, the right skill set to put down Superman in this, in this sort, of, uh, sort of combat. The nice thing is, Superman was shown as being leagues above the rest of Justice League, pun intended. Where when Thor came down, you could tell that it was like, oh, Thor, game changer. But it makes sense. If there's a Titan, if there's a Titan on the loose, wielding an artifact, you know you need to put that guy down? You need a Norse god wielding his own artifact. And at this level, you've got Thor from Ragnarok took such a big jump up in power. And then you give him Stormbreaker. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, he's now Super Saiyan God. Oh, okay. But now he's Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan. Oh, okay, he's now a step higher than where he was before when he was already vastly above pretty much every other character in the MCU. And from that standpoint, I think Thor just has, has the right mix of ingredients to defeat someone like Superman. Now, if you're to not have Stormbreaker... It's a different game. 